Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Adam with Retro Repairs and um, this is part two of my Dreamcast series where I'm going to try and repair this uh, Dreamcast that was stuck in a fire. So as we left off last video, um, physically the Dreamcast is in pretty good condition now. However, it doesn't read any discs. So I'm going to show you kind of what happens when I try and use it here. So we're going to open up the top here and I'm just going to turn it on and watch what happens with the laser. So I'm going to zoom in a little. So when we t power on, the laser will go up and down a bit, but nothing else will happen. Oh, and then we got to close the door here, sorry. So it spins, the laser moves, but it doesn't go back and forth or anything. So what's actually happening is the laser head will move up and down trying to find a disc, and then it will start reading the disc, and that's just not happening. So it tells me one of a couple of things. Either there's something wrong with the laser, um, there's something wrong with the whole assembly and it's not getting the proper power to move back and forth or um, It just needs to be cleaned better. So there's a couple of things that we're going to try and do first So I'm going to turn it off here um, First thing I want to do is actually we're going to physically move We're going to take this out. We're going to unplug this We're going to take this uh, laser assembly apart a little bit here. I want to try and find out a couple of things firstly is this laser capable of moving in the way it's supposed to? So I'm going to start it out at the far back. And what it's supposed to do is come in when we power it on. So let's plug it in. Power it on. And simulate closing the lid. So it does move in, but it's not finding a disc or anything. So when I try it with a disc, same thing will happen. Spins for a second. And then it will stop. So we need to remove this laser and we need to clean it out. That's going to be the first step here because everything functionally is working. It has power to the motor, the laser, the slide works, just it's not reading anything. Okay, so in the interest of time, I'm not going to document every single screw that I remove like I have in the past. However, there are three screws, one, two, and three. Removing those, you can then lift this entire board up and out of the Dreamcast. And I almost lost a screw right there. So we just want to make sure that we get all the screws out here and they're not going to sit on the board. So move that off to the side and then we have here the laser assembly. So we're going to continue disassembling this entire unit so that we can get access to that laser. Okay, so we've got the uh, laser unit kind of disassembled here, but I'm going to show you what it is that we're trying to access here. So let's try to zoom in nice as we can. So what we're looking at right now is this screw right there. Yeah. So this is the, it's called the trim pot. And what it is, it controls the resistance for the power going to the laser. So we're just going to adjust it ever so slightly. Um, we're going to turn that screw clockwise. The idea being that it will lower the resistance and give more power to the laser. So you don't need to do very much. You just got to get it in the threads here. So it's kind of an interesting screw as it is very shallow. So I'm gonna grab, see if, see if I can get a screwdriver that will get me in better. Okay, so I'm gonna use just a kind of a little micro flathead screwdriver. And all we're doing, get it in there, turn it ever so slightly to clockwise. Now, um, we just kind of assemble it back together. Let it sit into place here. And I'm going to make sure that this power cord isn't going to interfere with anything. So power cord should be run through the outside and then it'll come back up just like so. There we go. There it is. So we will pop it into the Dreamcast again and give it a try, see what happens. Okay, so power on. So it spins, laser moves up and down, as it should. So now we're going to try it with a disc. So still the same thing. So we're going to try adjust that pot a little bit more now. 
So again, make very sure that you unplug it before doing any work on it. And then it should pop just straight up once again. So you may have to do this a few times before you finally get the alignment that, or the power that you need. So I'm going to try it a few different times and if it still fails, um, what I'm actually going to do is look into maybe this ribbon connector needs to be replaced or it's possible we need to disassemble this whole unit and give it a thorough clean as some of the smoke could have infiltrated inside and could be affecting how it works. So. Um, like I said, you're not adjusting it very much. I'm going to say if you're doing more than a tenth of a turn at once, that's probably even too much. There we go. So, power off, plug it in. and power on. We're going to throw the disc in right away. Close the lid. So still not reading the fact that there's a disc in there. So um, I'm suspecting it's possibly something more than just that trim pot. So um, next step for me is going to be actually disassembling this whole laser and trying to make sure it's fully cleaned out. There's a couple parts in there that could be affecting it. There's a mirror inside the laser assembly that if, got, if it got dirty with smoke and everything else, um, we're going to run into issues. So uh, that'll be next is disassembly completely. Okay, so we're going to do a complete teardown on this now and really clean out this laser to make sure that... Um, I've done all that I can to try and recover this part before I go about replacing it. To buy a replacement laser online is going to be about 30 bucks. So, I mean, it's not a ton of money, but it's also not cheap. And that will definitely take a big dent out of the value of repairing and trying to flip one of these Dreamcasts. So, um, we're going to just jump right into taking this apart. So, a couple things we need to do. Firstly... There, all of these screws need to come out. So I still have two left in here right now, but there's three that have already been removed. And just like that, the screws are out. So now we're going to lift up this shielding on the bottom. And there are three screws attached to this metal plating that will need to be removed. And so with that one out now, we can get started on lifting this apart. So we're going to provide some slack with that ribbon connector and power cable and we want to very gently reach underneath and disconnect the ribbon connector. So you're just gonna pull straight and it should flip out now. And then there are two power connectors and that frees the board out. So the board, which I've previously cleaned up, the board itself looks fine um, where I need to look at is, in fact, this whole laser assembly, which I'm now disconnecting. Let's get these out of here, and we can put that aside. So, we want to disconnect this part here. So we're going to take this ribbon completely off. Set that aside. Now we have to find out how we're going to get all of this apart. So it looks to me like there are a couple of screws which need to be removed. We have a screw here at the end, which will hold down these gears. And then this should lift straight up. It does. So now we have that whole laser unit is completely removed. So we're gonna put the rest of this aside because we know the motors work. It will move, just it doesn't move as I want it to. And then we're going to just give this a once over. Look at all the parts of it. Make sure that there's no notable damage to it. Ribbon connector, 
um, looks to be in good shape. These ribbons here look to be in good shape. And now, um, we're going to try and pop off the top of this. So using my precision flathead bit, just getting my screwdriver under here, this should come off. And again, being very careful not to damage any of the connectors. There we go. So now that is completely removed. So what we see here underneath this is what the inside of a laser pickup looks like. Um, I'd love to go into a story about how it actually works, but to be brutally honest with you, I don't really know. But you want to be careful with a couple of things. Firstly, the laser lens, very important that it stays clean. So you don't want to touch it with your fingers or start scratching it. However, one thing I do want to do is make sure that I've given it a good clean. I tried cleaning it already with a Q-tip and some alcohol, but that was with the cover on, so I didn't have full access to the entire laser lens. So I've doused my Q-tip in some rubbing alcohol, and now I'm going to lightly, in a circular motion, go over the whole lens here. And I want to look and see if any blackness comes out, and it doesn't look like it does. So I think that's actually pretty clean. So underneath, just going to kind of run my Q-tip there. And again, I'm just checking to see if any smoke residue or anything sitting in here. So along here definitely does have something, so it comes up kind of dirty. So this, very, you very carefully actually can lift it up, and here I think is what we're looking for. I don't know if I can focus on this at all. Let's see if I can... So if you look right in here, uh, you see that little brown piece? That's a mirror, and that's what redirects the light into the sensor, I think, and it looks kind of dirty. If I reach my... I gotta wet that Q-tip up again. Let's just get a whole clean one. <clears throat> so using a clean Q-tip, if I just very lightly put it in there, spin it around a bit, uh, it actually doesn't look too bad doesn't come out dirty so but I just want to make sure that this is completely cleaned now there's a little bit of dirt that not I don't think the camera really picks it up but I'm getting something out of there so it's possible that underneath the laser or the lens here is part of where the problem lies so what I'm going to do now is reassemble this. So let that drop right into place. Again, just kind of touch it up with the Q-tip. Make sure that there's no stuff that has picked up on that lens. We're going to pop the cover back on and reassemble this whole thing. And I'd like to give this a try, see if I get any different uh, reaction from it now. So I'm going to reassemble in the same reverse order of how I disassembled. And we're going to give it a test. All right, so we have uh, reassembled this whole laser assembly here. So you have to make sure ribbon connector is connected. Make sure that this power cable is run underneath the guides here. Make sure that the eject, or the not the eject, sorry, the lid open switch is accessible. And then again, we just kind of put it straight down and the connector should pop into place just like so. All right, so we're going to now grab the power cable and try and see if this works. Okay, so we got it all hooked up here. 
So now it's time to power it on. Close the lid just by pressing the switch. Power it on, let's see what happens. So we have a sustained spin. Okay, no, it stopped. So more of the same deal. So I just want to try, open the lid, close it, see what happens. So still the same thing. Um, we're going to try hook it up to a TV just to see if we get anything different displaying on the screen now. Okay, so I have it hooked up to my TV now, and we're getting a video. Um, we're getting controller action, so I'm going to go through the set date procedure. Now, what I want to do is, by pushing this button just to simulate closing the lid, see what happens. Disc being checked. Let's go to play. Please insert game disc. So I'm going to try adjust that pot a couple quick times, see if I get any uh, change here. Okay, so I've made a few more adjustments, and I want to show you something. So I've adjusted the pot quite a bit. I almost did not a quarter turn, but a little bit under a quarter turn. Let's call it maybe a bit more than an eighth. So anyways, I simulate closing the lid, and now it's starting to spin a bit more. It's not consistently spinning, but so disc being checked. But it is still going. So it's definitely reading the disc better than it was. So I might even have to try and adjust the pot slightly more and uh, see if we get any action out of this. I'm just curious if this actually goes anywhere. So look at that, the disc is really starting to go now, but it's attracted the attention of my dog Kona as well, but still being checked. So if I quickly push the button, insert game disc. So it's spinning. And the laser is definitely recognizing something, but it's not reading the disc yet. So some fine tuning, I think, still required, and hopefully we can get this going. All right, so I've adjusted that pot probably about 50, 50 to 60 times and tested it, and I never really got anywhere further. It never tr booted into a game. It would think an awful hard about it, but... It, I never actually booted into anything. I couldn't even get it to read a CD. So um, I suspect the smoke damage has caused some sort of issues with the laser inside. So um, what I've done is I grabbed another laser assembly from a damaged Dreamcast that I already have and just swap it out. So I'm leaving the same board and everything in there. I just unplugged the one laser, which is this one. This is the one that came out of the smoke damage and installed this one. This one was on a liquid damage uh, Dreamcast, so the board itself had corrosion, but this looked pretty clean. So I'm hopeful that the laser is fine and there were just other issues with that board. So we're going to give this a try. I haven't tested this yet, so I really have no idea what to expect here. So using my foot, because I know you guys love that, I'm going to hold down the eject or the lid button and then push power. So we have spinning disc. It's spinning into the game, which is nice. However, I forgot to plug in the AV. There we go. So we now have AV. Um, holding down the lid, disc being checked. And the disc is spinning. And if you look at that, we're booting into Sonic Adventure. So um, nope, maybe not. I'm going to try another disc, just in case this disc is causing me problems. So I'm running into the same issue with another disc. This is NFL 2K, 
So I'm going to try a very, very slight adjustment to this, uh, the pot on this laser, just in case it was starting to wear out. And we're going to see maybe that's all that it needed. So I'm going to do that quickly and we'll give it another try. Okay, so I've made a couple of adjustments here. Um, as you can see on the side here, I have another power supply, which I pulled off of a one of the other Dreamcasts that I've picked up for parts, but um, turns out I don't actually need it here. I've done one thing that I think seems to have solved it. So um, I'm going to, right here, simulate closing the lid and show you what happens. So disc is being checked. We get the Sega screen, and we're now booting into the game. Um, so what is different, you might ask? I'm going to show you what I've done to try and fix this. So first thing to do, we're going to unplug this, and we're going to remove the power supply. So I've already unscrewed it. There are two screws to remove it. I've shown you how to do that already in the previous video, so I'm not going to go super in-depth about that. But when the power supply is out, you see these pins right here. These are what connect the power supply to the main board. And all I did was kind of push them towards the back, so this way. Um, the reason for that is sometimes when you're plugging the power cable in, in and out a bunch, um, it puts some forward pressure on the power supply and that pushes the whole entire unit towards the front of it. So what that actually does is over time it will bend these pins. Now these bent pins connect on the back side of the pins. So if they're bent forward towards the front of the system, you're not getting a solid connection. So what I suspect was happening was when I tried to turn the game on, it would boot up, the game would or the game would spin and it would boot, but then originally go back to the menu. And I suspect whatever was tasked with running the game wasn't getting enough power. So power on and it should boot right into the game now. Other than that I haven't changed any other parts. I'm still using that replacement laser that I've pulled from the liquid damage system um, but I didn't end up using this power supply which I also pulled. And see there we go straight into NHL 2K or NFL sorry NFL 2K. So I let go of that, stop the disc, pull it out. I'm going to try it again with, uh, where's my other disc? So we're going to try it with a different disc, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Um, I suspect actually there might be an issue with my Sonic Adventures game, so we're going to just use my toe to flip that switch. Let it check the disc. Spinning up. license screen and booting into the game. So now that I know it works uh, fairly reliably, what I'm actually going to do is use the cleaner power supply. So I'm going to take this out. Um, this supply I haven't really cleaned very well, so it does have some smoke residue on some parts. I, I try to clean it up a bit with a toothbrush, but I think in another video I'm going to actually give this a bit of an alcohol bath and kind of fully properly clean it. So in the meantime, for this particular system, just so that that power supply never really becomes an issue, I'm going to use this clean one. So switching them is pretty simple. There's two screws to remove. Then you plug it in and You've now switched over a power supply. So again, I just want to make sure that it's going to work properly. So using Tony Hawk Pro Skater, plug it in, hold down the switch and push power. So I want to make sure that I actually can get into a game here before I chalk this up as fixed.
looks an awful lot to me like this seems fine. So, um, looks like we were able to not only restore this console, but make it functional. Got rid of the smoke smell, and, well, as you can see, it works. So, definitely satisfied with the outcome of this. Um, so now I'm going to put the case back together, but as far as I'm concerned, this is good to go. So um, that's it for this first console. Um, as you saw from the beginning of the video, it came to me in, or video one, sorry, came to me in absolutely terrible condition, full of smoke damage. Um, there was much debate in the comments on my previous video about what actually happened. So I did get a hold of the seller of this, and he said that it was involved in a fire. So um, what was on there was actually smoke damage. So um, that's uh, showed you a couple ways to really clean up the shell of this. In part three, I'm going to fully clean out this power supply. Um, the underside looks good, but the top has some residual smoke and soot on it. So we're going to fully clean it up so that um, it never becomes an issue again. And you can trust that it's going to be safe for use and try and restore one of my other systems. So that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you found it enjoyable seeing this come back to life. And uh, if you like the video, give it a like, leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel. You'll be the first to find out as I get new uh, videos uploaded. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you next time.